Hey, it's Alicia from MobilityMastery.com, and I'm so excited to show you something today. I invented this very recently when I was working on myself. I was doing some tailbone fascia release. If you haven't checked that video out, make sure to check it out. We'll link to it in the description below. It often goes hand in hand with this one, but um, I wanted to get into my abdomen, and I've been somewhat unsatisfied with my self-help options. So one of them, if you've been with me a while, you may have seen this, is getting in there with your hands. And that can work really well, actually. It can work quite well. Um, but it it's hard on my hands. Like, I feel fatigued afterwards. So it's not something I enjoy doing because it feels like I just exerted a lot of effort. And then I feel like I need to release the fascia in my forearms to help my hands from doing my abdominal release. So um, I just grabbed a softball and was like, what if I stuck this in my abdomen and then grabbed my leg and smooshed it in there? And it actually works really well, especially for the small intestines. So I'm excited to show this to you and go ahead and fast forward if you want to go straight to the technique. But I have some safety and effectiveness uh, tips for you before we start, like who should do it and why, and who may not be able to do this. So I showed Stefan in my excitement. Stefan is my man, my partner in life and business. He's a lot taller than me, um, and it did not work for him. He's not flexible enough in the hips, <laughs> um, and it just for whatever reason didn't work. He was like, I don't know, I don't get it. I don't feel anything. I can't really get any pressure. I can't pull my leg up. Um, so this may not work for everybody, but if you have a history of gymnastics, if you have a history of yoga, if you're flexible, then I'm pretty sure this one will work for you. And I'm sorry if it doesn't. If it doesn't, then make sure to check out my hand abdominal fascia release if you haven't already, because that does work. And then keep in mind, you might have to release your forearms to help your hands after doing that one. Uh, so this is a really great option for anyone who has um, abdominal bloating issues if you have bloating during a period. So if you're female and you menstruate and you get bloating during your period, um, I personally believe that periods shouldn't be painful and I've experienced totally painless periods um, when I open up my fascia, when I'm not toxic. So typically, I believe um, this happens when we have periods because we're toxic and the blood that's trying to move out of us can't actually flow. It's not moving. And that's what causes the bloating and the pain and the cramps. Uh, so getting into the abdominal region and opening everything up can be amazing to facilitate blood flow. So not just for females, obviously, we want blood flow in the abdominal region no matter who we are. If you are someone who has leaky gut, if you have uh, Crohn's or colitis or uh, IBS or any of the other inflammatory bowel issues, right? This can be amazing because um, while it's pretty good for getting into some of the uh, large intestine tissue, we're really going after the small intestine here. Um, and there is a ton of fascia in the gut. We have a ton of fascia here. Uh, fascia wraps every nerve ending, and there are billions of nerve endings in our gut. Fascia wraps our organs, so it wraps those intestines, it wraps the liver, it wraps you know everything else that's in here um, that we might contact, and then of course it wraps the muscles. So we have muscle here too. Um, and then fascia actually wraps our, our arteries and our veins, our blood vessels, and our, you know, the nerves um, themselves, the big nerves. So we have a lot going on here. Um, so I love getting into the gut. I get really excited about it, as you can tell. Um, and this one has just worked magic for me. Like I felt like I lost five pounds from my abdomen the first time I did it. Went and showed Stefan, I was like, do I look different? He's like, you look thinner. <laughs> That's not necessarily what I was asking. Um, the reason I was asking was posture because, uh, and this is another reason you might wanna try this. If you are somebody who has a kind of a sway back um, or an excessive low back curve, uh, and you have maybe some abdominal tightness if you ever fell on your tailbone like I did, um, then this could be kind of like a, um, a tug of war happening between your low back and your low abdominals where both are kind of restricted um, and potentially inhibiting one another. So uh, those are the primary reasons that you might wanna do this, but honestly, I think all human beings should do this, uh, mainly because we live in such a toxic world, toxins accumulate in the gut, we're also very chronically stressed and anxious uh, these days, and we tend to hold a lot of that anxiety in the gut. So helping the, the fascia here, where our vital organs live, 
can be really life-changing, honestly, for the function of these organs. And so I really recommend it to everybody. And then of course the brain gut connection is something to optimize as well. So those are the reasons to try it. Um, of course you want to use caution and um, just listen to your body. And if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. And as with everything, you know, if there are reasons you maybe shouldn't be doing this that I'm not aware of, of course you have to talk to your doctor. I always like to use a lot of caution when going into the abdomen because especially here, you know, on the internet, maybe you've had a, a surgery, maybe there's a, a piece of mesh in here, I don't know. So just keep in mind what you've been through already and think about whether you should or shouldn't do this just to be safe. So grab your softball or whatever ball you are using and let's do this. I like to start on the left side of my abdominal region here because that's where the descending colon is. So it's just kind of something I've learned that I've stuck with that makes sense to me. You know, if you want to open up a dam, you want to open up, you know, or a series of dams along a river, you want to open up the lowest dam first, right? So the water can flow. Well, our bodies are kind of the same way. We're actually going to be opening up portals basically for toxicity and poop and blood, sorry, just keeping it real, to flow. Um, and you want to open up those channels kind of sequentially, especially if this is the first time you're doing this. So um, I like to start on the left. I am going to show you that and then I'm going to show you on the right. You're going to be able to see the ball a little better when I get to the right. Um, so since we're trying to kind of start at the lowest spot first on the left, right, that would be that lowest dam. I'm going to go as close as I can to kind of my um, hip bone here and then bring my leg up and then I'm going to squeeze it in and you'll and, and I want you to give it just a gentle squeeze to start uh, especially if you've never done abdominal work so the first time you do this I want you to make sure you're getting used to the terrain you're getting to know your abdominal cavity what it actually feels like to kind of smash it a little bit with a ball and keep in mind this can feel really intense but you want it to be doable you need to be able to breathe through this whole thing uh, so I'm starting low and I'm trying to always position the ball on my leg in a place that has the most leverage so that when I pull my leg in, the ball actually sinks into my abdominal cavity. And then what we're going to do is use our breath. So you're going to want to use your breathing to actually assist here in the release. So um, we're not trying to clunk anything here. I have another abdominal fascia release technique using your hands where you might go after knots. That's not what we're doing here. Um, so you're just pulling it in and breathing is going to feel a little harder. <laughs> um, and then as you breathe, uh, as you breathe in, you let your leg kind of move away and you let the ball pop out. And then as you exhale, you pull it in. And then on the, the pull in, you can hold it there for a few seconds. So right now I'm noticing that the ball is kind of slipping out that way a little bit. So I'm just going to position it a little better. Boom. Now, oh, that's a good spot. So the reason I just showed you that is I don't want to pretend I'm doing it the way you're supposed to and that it's super easy. I want to actually show you that I know what I'm doing and I still have to move the ball around a lot to get the right spot. And then I'm going to stay on one spot for I, I, three to four breaths. So it's letting it kind of pop out and then <sighs> exhaling. And then if you can kind of hold your breath a little bit and just let it sit there, great. And then <sighs> and if you start to feel your heart beating, you know you found a really good spot. Um, when in doubt, don't. So if you ever feel scared going in, listen to that. It may be an instinct. So I always encourage you to listen to your body. Um, but if you feel safe and you feel that heart thump, 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 you know you found a good spot. Um, so I might stay on that, again, like I said, for three to four breaths. And then I'm going to move up. 
And so I want to be super clear here that I could pro easily spend 15 to 20 minutes on this and I'm not going to show you every single thing that I do because it will pretty much look the same. But what I want to show you right now and then kind of set you free to do this on your own is the landscape you can work in safely and effectively here with the, the ball this way. So I've been able to actually, you know, kind of work my way up. So really low where we just were, then I would move it up maybe just an inch and that's going to feel very different. You're going to be in your small intestine here, um, grabbing a little bit of maybe where the small intestine is, uh, the fascia that wraps the small intestine is maybe stuck a little bit to some of the abdominal fascia, um, maybe even some of the, the uh, arteries <laughs> that run, run here or the veins um, and then uh, or nerves and then potentially even the large colon is stuck to the small intestine. That's possible. And then you can get all the way up to just under your ribs. So I'm, if you can see that, like I'm actually right at my rib and that's totally safe. And then I'm smush, smushing the ball into the cavity, not into my ribs. And what we're grabbing here is actually a little bit of diaphragm fascia. <sighs> just going to breathe into this. It actually, I actually like the way th this feels, but it's intense. It's like, oh, I need that. I need that. <sighs> and when you're up here by the ribs, that breathing is even more important because you want your diaphragm to release if it's stuck to the ribs a little bit, right? And it should be nice and squishy. So you can feel around here and all this abdominal cavity should feel soft. When you feel your own abdomen, it should feel soft. And a lot of us have, like that feels so much softer because I've been doing this a lot lately. Um, and that just feels a lot better even just with what I just did. Um, so go ahead and like feel around your abdominal area here, you know, with your hands either in between or before, just so you get to know your body a bit. Okay, so we're kind of traveling around the side. And then you could make your way all the way around and down if you wanted to, right? So then we would do the right kind of high diaphragm ribby area. Whew. And then we've got the liver over here, the liver. Most of us have some intensity over here. I just say it like that because it's intense for most people going in here. So you might want to back off. If it's too intense, just back off a little bit. Let that ball come out. Let it sink in, push it in. Um, and then, you know, you would continue and, and go down. But what I want to show you right now is just how amazing this is if you can get into this position for your small intestines. So once you've kind of opened up the large intestine, which would be going all the way up this side and then all the way over and then down, which might be three spots here, depending on your anatomy, bigger people, maybe you have more spots, smaller people, fewer uh, across and then down. And then we can get into the entire area around that belly button. And this is really where this technique shines, although it's great for everything I just showed you. Now, I wanna show you a couple of um, different ways to maneuver here to potentially get a different result, depending again on your anatomy. So one thing you could do is load all the fascia by bringing your knees up here, um, kind of into the abdominal cavity, kind of get your spot right, breathe sink and then extend your leg. So that leg could, could go out if you wanted it to. Um, it's just going to add a little something different. You could, you know, roll a little bit one way with your leg or the other as you're breathing. That's going to massage a little bit and maybe do a little bit of shearing. Um, but mostly you're just going to play around with extending the opposite leg, bending them both up potentially and bringing the ball in. Um, that doesn't work for me so much, but it could for you. So let's say you find a really good spot towards the middle. Maybe you need both legs to hold the ball there. I don't know. Um, the other thing that I've been playing around with is kind of crossing. Oh, <laughs> that really did it for me. Um, but this, I know it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of area here, surface area, but it feels like an entire, I don't know, like, 
tundra and mountains and a bunch of terrain. I just have been watching so many documentaries on nature lately that, um, but there's a lot here. Um, so I want you to take your time. I want you to explore. I don't want you to miss anything. And so once I do these spots, um, if I'm wanting to be really thorough, I would probably do at least four um, in my small intestine area, maybe more, right? Um, and, and like I said, that's kind of where this really shines. So again, once you're pulling it in, you're breathing. And you shouldn't really feel a whole lot on your leg, but if you do, it suggests this fascia is also really tight. So you might get, um, the way that I've been kind of thinking about this is we actually have a lot of lymph in the groin and kind of hip flexor region. And so when you are able to position it to get both, like right now I'm kind of getting both. So I'm just resting this leg on this one and then just pulling it in and my God, that's intense. So as you can kind of see, like if, if I were just pulling it forward, it wouldn't do much. But when I cross it and uh, <laughs> that really gets it. Um, so it changes. The sensation is going to change depending on my abdominal anatomy, depending on my anatomy in my legs, right? Depending on um, the position I put myself in. So you want to explore all of those options I just gave you. And like I said, as long as you're feeling pretty relaxed at the nervous system level, like you can hang here and breathe through it, um, then, then great. You can stay on here for 10, 15, 20 minutes, like I mentioned. Um, and as I said at the beginning, if this is the very first time you're doing it, please do yourself, do your body a favor and go from the left side up and then across and then down and then do kind of the small intestine region. Um, I want to mention just a few other landmarks here. If you believe your psoas is really tight, that could be something that we contact here. Um, it's going to be very briefly contacted here at the hip, so each hip. But the psoas actually runs posterior to the backside um, and attaches at the spine um, or at the back. Uh, so it's really deep. So you might get a little bit of it, but that's not really what we're going for. Um, and then you can go pretty low here. Um, again, just depending on your anatomy, what you feel. And the lower you go, you're going to kind of get into the, the pelvic floor region. But again, you kind of have to like maneuver. Now I got it. <laughs> so it wasn't working. Like I couldn't quite get either leg, but I had to twist this one up and over and then kind of like hook it in and then I could get it. Uh, so this is just an amazing technique that I've been really excited about. I know it's not going to work for all of you um, because you might not have the flexibility. Um, so I hope that this works for you if you're watching this and I would love to hear about it in the comments below. All right, so I'd love to hear about how this went for you. Did you try it? Even if you haven't tried it, if you just watched it and you're like, I need this in my life, I would like for you to share that below um, because the more we talk and the more we share, if you share your experience of doing this, I know it can inspire someone else your stories inspire me every time you comment. Uh, so I really hope that you love this one as much as me. And again, if you weren't able to do this for some reason, if you weren't flexible enough, then um, if you're looking for a way to get into your abdominal fascia, then check out my hand self-help technique. Again, we'll link to that below. So thank you so much for watching. Share this with anyone you think could benefit and I will see you next time. <laughs>